Hey everyone, Chris here again. So today we were going to work on the transform component, but instead, uh, first we're going to fix a few bugs, and then we're going to look at implementing uh, GUIDs and setting those up instead of using uh, instead of using just standard strings uh, for names and such like that. We'll still have the names in there for the user to read, but we're going to set a backend uh, GUID system up uh, for easier communication. Then we're going to uh, sort of talk about how the messaging system will work and we'll go over that, at least the early stages of how I want to have it and we're going to uh, change things up a little bit from how we originally had things. Alright, so uh, first things uh, first, uh, so there's an error in the component manager CPP. Uh, when I was uh, typing up this code, I forgot to uh, instantiate the uh, instance for the component manager. So you just need to uh, do this line right here. Uh, add this in at the top of your uh, component manager CPP and that'll solve that one issue. Next issue we have is in the renderer CPP. Uh, we need to add a void renderer renderer function just with nothing in it and that'll just prevent that issue, uh, that error from happening. Um, so don't worry about that. Then in the game object header, we want to go over, uh, we want to go down. Uh, first thing, you want to add a semicolon at the end of the struct right here. I left that out and that causes uh, error, so we want to fix that. And this was originally component right here and you want to change that to game object. Uh, when I was copying it over, I forgot to change that. So just make sure you go through and change that. All right, and then over in uh, component, uh, you just want to add a semicolon at the end of the struct for the component compare. And that wraps up the bugs uh, that are here. And as you can see, there's no bill, uh, errors anymore down here. All right, so next we're going to talk about uh, implementing GUIDs. So first thing we're going to do is we'll start off with the component GUIDs. And we're going to be using uh, the uh, Microsoft GUID uh, stuff, which also I believe internally calls a UUID, uh, so Universal Unique Identifier. And GUID is Global Unique Identifier, so it's unique to one run of the program. As long as we don't have multi, uh, multiplayer, we're going to be okay with the GUID. So, first thing we want to include is we want to include object base dot h, and then we want to include GU, uh, GUI DDEF. So GUI DDEF dot h include that in there and then just as uh, one of the variables we're going to declare here we're going to call it uh, guid we'll just call it mguid then we're going to head over into the component cpp and in both constructors here we're going to write h result uh, we don't really need this because we don't expect there to be errors but we should catch it uh, get that return anyways and we're going to call co create guid and we're going to pass in a reference to our guid variable so m guid all right so that's it for the uh, component um, well we want to put that also in the other constructor here and then i'll make sure that the guid is generated now we're going to do the same over in game object so we can just actually copy stuff over from component and paste it in game object here. Uh, and then we want to open up the game object CPP as well. And we're going to need to go back and add that variable for component the GUID there. So we're going to add that in here. All right, and now on constructor or objects, they will all generate GUIDs and we can build this and it should all work. I tested this out before, so <laughs> yeah, see it all works there. So then if we run this, we get a nice string GUID that we can use for comparing stuff uh, rather than relying on string names. Now that said, now that we've got those GUIDs in, why don't we change our component comparers and our game object comparer to use the GUID instead? That would make sense, right? Rather than comparing right on the name. And what we can do is we can, uh, whenever we want to compare, we can, well, questions actually, I'm not sure if we want to do that. 
we might because the game object comparer is definitely user so let's actually talk about this for a moment so where we use the game object comparer right is we use it in find component by name which takes in a string name which the user would pass in this is a user ex, uh, accessibility function right so that passes in the name and then we compare with the game object here right so what we really should do is because the game object compare it's taking in a name but game objects aren't required to have unique names so we should convert this name into a guid so i'm still trying to figure out how to do that and you know what why don't i take a quick break and i'm going to look it up and uh see i'll come back with an answer here all right so i'm back and i was looking at this and i realized that we already for the game objects we already have find child uh, find child by name find all children by name and later on we'll implement uh, the find game object by name find all game objects by name and that'll be in the uh, scene graph or actually we'll probably implement it as uh, static functions in the game object um, we'll see about where we actually implement it so and then I was looking at the components and actually I was going over and we actually really shouldn't have find component by name so I'm actually going to get rid of that there. Um, we don't actually want that one there because you're not ever really going to be pulling up components by names because component name is all handled internally. Components can have data that the user can change, but the component name is not something the user is actually able to change. So we're actually just going to go through and make sure that we actually remove that stuff um, from here, at least from the game object and such like that. So we won't have it there. And if we go over to component manager, I don't believe we have anything in here. Yeah, we don't. Now, here's one thing where we do want to use the GUID. See right here where we uh, remove component with game object. And we're just comparing two pointers. This, uh, it should work fine. But why don't we actually go and why don't we make uh, this compare to the M GUID since we know those are going to be unique always we can just do this so this is really one of the good things about the GUID is we can use it for compares like this which is where we should be using it rather than for trying to take a, a, a name that the user is entering convert it to a GUID because that would involve finding the object then and it just it doesn't really work that way at least as far as I can picture it in my mind so we're actually just going to change that over to uh, comparing GUIDs. And that's, we're gonna have to do that. We're also gonna go in and uh, check. Oh, I forgot about this. Apparently we're actually using the add component by name uh, to check to see if the component already exists so that you can't have multiple of the same component. This is another thing that we're actually getting rid of. We're gonna remove this uh, that uh, requirement of this component system. So now you can have as many of a component as you want on an object and they'll all get messages depending on whether they need them or not. All right, so uh, next thing we'll do is we'll actually talk about the messaging system. Now this is gonna be a high level, so I'm just gonna be talking and not really doing anything on screen here. Um, so basically for the messaging system, well, we're going to break this up. All right, so originally we had uh, the uh, all the, the fixed update, the update, the late update, and the render all part of the component manager, and this is not ideal. Um, it sort of seemed like a good idea when I was originally designing this, but as I read more into this, because life is constant learning, right? So I'm learning about this stuff as I go along, and we're actually going to split this up. So we're actually going to have the scene graph, which will manage all our transform components because you need that parent-child hierarchy for updating. So the scene graph will handle all the transform components. The uh, render or the there will be a render manager which will handle all of the rendering. There will be a physics manager to handle physics, uh, which will deal with fixed update, update, late update. Uh, there will be a script manager which handles all the scripts, uh, etc. As we go through, so you'll basically have a manager for every main class of object rather than what we have right now which is basically just one giant manager and the way I can think of describing it is one manager to rule them all one manager to find them 
one manager to bring them all and in the darkness bind them. And this is very appropriate. If you like Lord of the Rings, you'll know exactly where that's from. Even if you don't, you've probably heard it. But that's really what it is because the component manager right now is kind of like a black box. And I want to shed some light in there and break it up into different components so that it's easier to extend, easier to maintain. So that's sort of the end plan. And one of the things that will be crucial to that is we're going to have to go in and create a messaging system or an event system. I'm not sure which way I'm leaning. Probably more to the event system. And basically we'll have an event system that they can put, that will tie all the managers together. So every time a component is added to the manager, it'll check what it is and send out a message to the relevant manager. Say, hey, here's something that you might be interested in that you need to handle. So we're going to send this over to you and let you deal with it from now on. So that's sort of the general idea of how I'm looking at doing this. Uh, so it's probably going to, it's, I'm going to go through, um, and we're going to work on that stuff later. Uh, in the meantime, though, we're going to go through and we're going to finish off what we already have as much as we can. And then we're going to come back and make those tweaks after. All right. So that's it for this, uh, this episode here. So I'll see you later.